I'm very happy to be here with Jeff Jarvis. Jeff is a professor of journalism at the City University of New York and he has also written extensively on digital and new media issues, mostly on his blog Buzz Machine. He's also the author of the book What Would Google Do? But most importantly and foremost, he is a journalist. And what I would like to do is talk to you a little bit about journalism and how social media has changed the profession, profession of journalism. Now, first question would be a more personal one. What social networks do you use yourself and why do you use them and what for? Well, in a sense, the whole internet is a social network and there's just platforms above them. So I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I blog, uh, though Twitter has rather ruined me for blogging because I just can get rid of things quickly now. Um, LinkedIn, um, and here, there, and everywhere. And um, when we come to journalism, the professional <coughs> journalism, in fa how far has social media changed the profession and how far did it really make a difference? I don't think it's social media per se. I think that's just an indication of what's happening because the internet enables people to communicate directly with each other. And, and now we don't just speak, now we can also listen. And that's a very hard skill for journalists to learn, I think. Uh, we tended to go know what the story was and go find the expert and write the story ourselves. And now uh, we're starting a new degree at CUNY, we hope, in social journalism, where we're gonna first teach journalists to listen to communities and get to know communities, listen to them. Now, social media tools are one mechanism to do that, but so is going and seeing someone in the flesh. But there's so much content out there, there's so much material, so many sources, and there's also so much ru rubbish or misleading information, false information, deliberately misleading. How should journalists deal with all that? What do they need to learn? Well, first, I think don't confuse the internet with a medium like ours. And just because it's not edited to perfection, the whole internet's ruined, right? The internet is a street corner. And of course you're gonna hear rubbish there, but you're also gonna hear brilliance there and you have to select and you have to figure it out. So the key skills of the journalist today, I think include being able to find out who is legitimately a witness, who is legitimately an expert. Uh, the, people can share information on their own now and we're no longer the gatekeeper to that. So key journalistic skills to add value to that flow of information include being able to verify witnesses and um, debunk rumors and confirm facts and add context. And then of course, most importantly of all, to go ask the questions that aren't in that flow and that's reporting. And you said verification is becoming more and more important. It's becoming an essential skill. Do you feel that journalists these days have this skill or is there still a lot for them to learn? And if yes, what do they need to learn? Well, we always have things to learn, and especially as the world changes so rapidly, the learning and the change never ends. Uh, I, I think verification is, is, is very important, but it's not, as, it's not binary. It's not as simple of, aha, that's checked off. Um, I, th I think we have to operate with many signals. And we learn there from Google. Right? When Google goes through search and tries to find the better things to put higher up, it, it listens for signals. Uh, for example, um, I was involved in a startup called Daylife back in the day that, that uh, aggregated the news like Google News. And one problem we shared with Google News was that we put the latest version of a story up. Well, that tended to be the 87th wire service rewrite of a story. It was too far away from the source. So Google News recognized that, and then they went for um, citations. If a lot of people say that uh, the Süddeutsche Zeitung uh, says this and says this and says this and says this, and they realize that the Süddeutsche is perhaps near the source of the story and they'll increase its rank in search. It's those little signals that you get. Or you look at Andy Carvin who tweeted the Arab Spring from his desk in Washington. His first primary skill was to discern nodes and networks of real witnesses. So he would know that, aha, you're there and you say that he's there, now I'm gonna trust him more. Now if he says she is there, well, maybe I trust that a little less, I don't know. Um, it's not binary, it's not as uh, black and white, but it does get us closer and closer and closer to verification and the truth. So you are referring to Google, but in how far can algorithms, technology, tools aid in the process of verification? They can aid a lot, they just can't do it all. Uh, because all systems will be gamed. All systems that we can make, if somebody has a motive to game it, they will and somebody's gonna to try to trick it. There's a guy at Google named Matt Cutts, and his job is to get rid of spam. Now you think, by the way, that he would be the meanest soul on earth because he has to deal with all the worst of the earth every day. He's actually one of the nicest guys you know. And Matt's job is to constantly look for signals of, of authority, quality, originality, and so on. 
it's also his job to recognize where the spammers and the, and the dark souls are going to come in and try to fool him. And he needs to be no more than one half step behind them. As journalists, you can say that we've always had to do the same thing. People would try to game us, you know, public relations people or, or, or politicians would do that. Uh, and now it just happens faster and better. So no, no algorithm is going to solve this problem entirely, but algorithms can help by giving you some signals. At the end of the day, we as journalists have to try to put our trust on the line and help determine what we think is trustworthy. So that sounds like you see a future role for journalists to play, so they won't be redundant. But what would be your advice for especially young journalists, but also for the older generation who have to get accustomed to all this? There's definitely a role for journalists. Uh, I would argue more of a role than ever. There's not the room to be able to do commodity news, to repeat the same thing that 87 other outlets have repeated. What we have to concentrate on is the highest value of journalism. We have to concentrate on the things that aren't in the flow of information, that do need verification, that do need explanation, where we truly add value, and not to repeat everyone else in the business. So if you are the fifth best or the 50th best at something, you almost shouldn't bother doing it. You should be the best. That's the first bit of advice. You should still learn the eternal verities, the eternal truths of journalism, of fairness and accuracy and completeness and so on. You should learn how to use all the tools of media and how to operate cameras and microphones and, and, and whatever operates because you can tell stories in new ways. You should also learn that journalism isn't just storytelling. It could be data. It could be platforms to connect people together. Um, we teach entrepreneurial journalism at CUNY. Uh, we teach journalists to start their own businesses and to be responsible stewards of journalism. And then finally, we at CUNY are looking to start a new degree in social journalism, which is about the practice and study of engaged communities. And the first skills we're going to teach there are listening to communities. Well, thank you very much, Jeff Jarvis. Very illuminating. I wish you all the best. Happy tweeting, blogging, and so on. And keep going. Thank you. Thank you.